Well, um, ADHD is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, right? So typically there are three presentations of ADHD. There is the hyperactive, which we think about people that just cannot stop moving in many places. And, but what's interesting is it's not only the physical physicality of it, but for some people that hyperactivity is internal where their brains just don't shut off. There's that. You have the inattentive type, which is the person that you think is sort of a daydreamer, heads in the clouds. And then there's something called the combined type where you see a, a little bit of both. Hi, and welcome to Beyond Empty Nest. I'm your host, Jody Silverman, speaker, mentor, and chief dare officer at Moms Who Dare. Every Thursday, I'll share stories of midlife transformation, happiness tips, and dare you to see the opportunities waiting for you so that you can make this next chapter even better than the last. If you're ready to dare, I'm ready to dare with you. Let's get into today's episode. All right, everybody, I have a few questions for you. Are you having trouble focusing? Do you feel like maybe you're stretched too thin? Maybe you're like so many other women, myself included, having trouble managing your everyday, day-to-day, everyday, struggling to rediscover yourself during this next chapter. If you said yes to any of these questions, you're not alone, my friends. Too many of us, and by us, I mean midlife women. As we approach midlife and go through transitions, such as our children leaving, retiring from our jobs, trying to figure out who we are, feel a lot of these feels, loss of focus, stretch too thin, overwhelm, not knowing where to begin or how to begin. So the question becomes, why? Is it the life transitions, such as empty nest, caring for our aging parents, or maybe menopause, that causes us to feel off, or maybe it's something else altogether that we've never considered. Well, today my guest will share with us that other reason that you could be feeling unfocused and overwhelmed. Lauren Gladstone is not only my good friend, but she is the founder of Uniquely Wired Coaching, ADHD and Executive Function Coaching. As a former banker, hospital administration employee, a sales representative, ready? plant-based chef and a volunteer board member, Lauren can accurately say that she has experienced life from many enriching perspectives. For the past 25 years, Lauren has been an advocate and educator for her daughter who struggles with ADHD and executive function challenges. She's learned to navigate the health and school systems and understand the joy and challenges of parenting a neurodiverse child. Through patience and persistence, She's helped her daughter achieve great success and independence. This experience motivated Lauren to become an ADHD coach. It is her wish to impart the wisdom to other parents who are struggling with their children or themselves and to support them in their journey. She's married with three children and she enjoys entertaining, tennis, scuba diving, photography, and travel. And of course, she loves hanging out with me. Of course. (laughs) Lauren, welcome to Beyond Empty Nest. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, I'm I'm so excited you're here because as I said, you know, you are such a special friend to me and and you are the reason that I started. I knew I had an attention deficit something. Anybody who knows me will tell you. They <laughs> knew it before I knew it. And yet I start and you and I have had conversations about, you know, I really do believe I have undi- an undiagnosed level of ADHD myself, although high functioning. Um it's there. And I think what what you have brought to light for me is like you turn on that light bulb, but not everything is because of menopause. Not everything is because of depression and sadness because your kids have left the house. That it could be, like you said, perhaps it's something else. So let's talk about ADHD. First of all, like, what is it? Oh my, I threw that one out there. <laughs> well, um, ADHD is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, right? So typically there are three presentations of ADHD. There is the hyperactive, which we think about people that just cannot stop moving in many places. 
And, but what's interesting is it's not only the physical physicality of it, but for some people that hyperactivity is internal where their brains just don't shut off. There's that you have the inattentive type, which is the person that you think is sort of a daydreamer heads in the clouds. And then there's something called the combined type where you see a a little bit of both. (laughs) And oftentimes ADHD has at least in our generation was not diagnosed as often as one would see in boys, because typically girls were considered not problems, right? And it has nothing to do with academics or intelligence. So you could be brilliant, but really struggle. And women in general have learned over the years to mask their symptoms. Mm. And what happens is that, you know, being on a schedule, whether it's in school or having your parent kind of create that schedule and then kind of learning to accommodate and compensate over the years, uh, we do, we do pretty well. And then all of a sudden perimenopause and menopause can hit where we start to see drops in estrogen levels. And that oftentimes, and I, and Joe, you and I have talked about this where we're like, do we have Alzheimer's? Are we getting dementia? We're forgetting things. It's we don't scary. remember. It's very scary. We talk about it a lot, but it's scary. And I just want to insert before we go on, because sure. we're talking. I just want everybody to keep in mind that you should always consult your primary 100%. care physician, you, your primary care physician or anybody in your life. If you have a therapist, if you think something's happening that doesn't feel right for you. So just I just wanted that out there. Okay. Hundred percent. You have to listen to your. You have to listen to your body, and really, you know, you are you are the best advocate for yourself. Absolutely, yeah. um, and you also always want to make sure that you rule out any other underlying issues that that could be present. Yeah. Um, but oftentimes, but when estrogen levels drop, cognitive function can drop. We're not sleeping well, which impacts emotional regulation. It impacts our ability to manage time you know, uh, processing speed or, you know, remembering memory, because again, when we're tired, that can also impact and everything sort of, unfortunately, sort of snowballs and builds upon themselves. Right. Um, and, and so, and, you know, when we don't have, especially when our, when our kids leave and we're in that emptiness place, we don't, we don't often have those time, those restrictions and those parameters imposed around us. So we have all these lofty goals of things that we want to do, yet we can't seem to get them done. And that starts where we start. That's where the shame starts to compound. That's when we start getting down on ourselves. And so then we start to see this like, you know, negative vicious circle that starts to develop. Um, And our, and our, you know, my goal always is to really try to, to break that cycle Um, you know, really start to have women, especially start to understand their unique brain wiring, give themselves that permission, that compassion, um, and then try to figure out, you know, what works well for you. Yeah. I love, I love how you say that self-compassion, self-compassion. And, but I, you know, you did say so, and it's interesting because I remember back when I left corporate America to start my own business Mm -hmm. and you would think that I was super, super busy when I did that. I didn't have to be anywhere at any time. I didn't have to get up and go into an office. And it was, I did have, I worked hard to build my business and yet I had this free time and Mm -hmm. I felt very discombobulated. And, and you said something very interesting because like a lot of, whether it's a job or whether it's the schedule of your children, when that goes away, all of a sudden there's no structure left. There's nothing. And that alone can, so you can feel unfocused and all over the place without having ADHD, but it could feel like ADHD. And yet Absolutely. Could, but yet at that point, it could be that you've had it like me, but because I really function when I have things to do. And, and look, you know, whenever I work with parents, one of the things that I always talk about is consistency, routines, you know, that, that structure is so important for everyone, but especially people with ADHD. And so, and and you're absolutely right. You can have all of this and not be diagnosed with ADHD, but if you're feeling this way, it is worthwhile to just talk to somebody and get it checked out. There are plenty of screeners, plenty of therapists that can diagnose. Mm -hmm. And at least if that, that is the case. And if you are start seeing these patterns, 
at least then, whether it is taking medications, which could be helpful for some, mm -hmm. um, it could also mean changing our lifestyle, mm -hmm. right? And start to implement some of these tools that have worked for us in the past. Like, so for example, like you were saying, you know, all of a sudden our kids are gone and, and our and our work life and our everything is so different, but we have to give ourselves that permission for that planning and that organization that we, and, you know, for so many years, we've always put our needs last. Yes. And so now it's a time for us to prioritize what, what it is that we need. And for some of us, even if it's not ADHD, or if it is, we really have to start to plan and so, figure out how to create that routine for ourselves. So, you know, it's all, it's like we, we there were, there were three key points that you and I talked about before this. And one of them, and the, and one of them, it was with the, not in any particular order, but to reprioritize you. Absolutely. And I think you, you almost have to start with that one to go to the first one that we talked about was, which you'll talk into. It's like, you say, take back the calm and learn to reset your new course. Mm -hmm. talk, talk, talk into what you mean by that. Like take back the calm and learn to reset your new course. If you're feeling this, is that, and, and are those the typical feelings, unfocused, scattered, unable to concentrate? You know, you have this project, but you don't know where to start. Is that all of it? Okay. Yes. And then when you don't know where to start and you're not, or you're feeling very overwhelmed and it just mm -hmm. seems like, you know, like I always say with kids, it's almost like spaghetti and they don't even know where, where, <laughs> the, where to begin. Um, yeah. So yes, you're, you're feeling all of that. And then that, you know, and, and what happens is that our brains are wired towards something called a negativity bias. Yep. And so one of my first coaches said to me, we need to have the positive stuff stick. So, you know, the positive stuff has to be like Velcro and it's got to stick. And the negative stuff has to slide away like Teflon. Unfortunately, it tends to be the opposite. And so what happens is, is that when these situations occur, what ends up happening is that we start getting down on ourselves and like, oh, we did it again. And then we're we're all really good at going down those, those rabbit holes of those ruminations of, I can't believe I did this again. I can't get anything right. I'm disorganized. I'm a failure. You know, and it starts to really manifest yeah. itself. So, you know, when we talk about that, taking back that calm, when there is calm, that's where learning and growth takes place. And that's really important because you know, think about our brains, right? Our brains were designed to protect us. So in, you know, back in the days when tigers and dinosaurs were running after us, <laughs> what are we were doing? You know, there's the flight, people would, you know, see fear and run. So some people will do that, right? And they just avoid the task avoidance. They just don't do it, like paying their taxes or paying certain bills or taking care of, you know, laundry that's piled up for weeks and weeks. I mean, that's flight. There's freeze where we literally just freeze and we literally shut down and we don't even know what to do. So we just retreat. What I'm seeing now is a lot of social media scrolling, a lot, I mean, a lot. And again, hours can go by where nothing gets done. So then we're feeling bad about ourselves. And then there's also the fight too, which we're not really seeing in that situation, but you know, and then with kids, we're seeing fib, right? Where they have chocolate all over their face and you say to them, did you eat that chocolate? And the first thing out of the, no, I didn't do it. You know, <laughs> and they don't even think it's like, so those, those are instinctual, they're natural. And so when we are at a heightened state of this anxiety, right? It's important that we need to sort of maintain this calm. And the way we do that is with self-care, right? So when we look at and what we call in ADHD coaching, this like tower of power, we want to look at this pyramid, the base of that pyramid has to be, you know, are we sleeping well? Are we eating well? Are we getting enough exercise? And when I mean exercise, listen, if you want to go and work out every day and get on a spin class, great, good for you. But it doesn't have to be that. Mm -hmm. Go walk around your block, right? Take a walk for 20 minutes every day. Just do something, get outside, you know, and the, and the other thing that I would add to that is mindfulness. You know, the yeah. idea of meditation of, and again, it doesn't have to be long, but when we start to dial back in, focus on our breath, doing it, you know, you could, again, do it at, at a car. Don't do it at a stoplight. I don't want you getting any trouble there, but the idea in is, park. right, right. Do it, you know, but, but it could be before you wake up, when you go to bed, you know, thinking about that self-care of dialing it in, because what happens is, is that when we can reduce the calm over time, when we get into situations that can feel overwhelming and, and we don't know what to do and we're having trouble managing our time, when the calm is lower, that's when we can stop and think. 
and start to say, I'm struggling with this. What is one step that I can take? How can I break this down into manageable parts so that it's good for me, so that I can handle it? So that's really what I mean by resetting our course. And I, I, everything that you talked about that my audience has heard said a different way, but never related to these feelings that are associated with having ADHD and the lack of focus. And one of the, I, it's interesting because there's two ways that I never, I never looked at it as tape out the comm and reset for my new course, but I love the two ways that I do that. I actually will either, I don't do it every day, but I, I would say I probably about four, four out of the seven days a week before I get out of bed, I put my earbuds in when I wake up and I put on the calm app and I listen to the 10 minute daily calm and, or I sit up in bed and I'm thinking, well, so how do I want to feel today? Yeah. And that's like, and in the part, like, yeah, because it puts, absolutely in, instead of just jumping up, grabbing your phone, look at it, like, take a minute to breathe, take a beat, take a beat to breathe. Yeah. And, and set those intentions, which are very yeah. important. And, and also, um, you know, when we talk about like setting goals and achieving them. Let's talk about that because we make, have make every, the goals. Make, Cause let me just tell you, Lauren, that I, for a long time, I, whenever we had to set goals, when I would sit around the sales meeting, when I was in sales, I, I would tense up. I'd be like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what my goals are. And you do say that learning to set goals, we don't haven't all been taught how a good way to learn to set goals and how to achieve them. And I'll add something is to celebrate them. So it's extremely mm -hmm. important that, you know, and again, when we're talking about goals, I mean, again, you know, in a sales meeting, that's, that's one thing, you know, I'm going to sell a million dollars this year or whatever it may be. Even that, like how? But, but <laughs> yes, but, but being realistic. And the one thing that I would always say is to never set more than three goals per day. Like that's that. very important because again, I always say this, set the bar lower, achieve that, do something that seems really for in everybody's different do something that you think that you know that you can take that you can do that you can do well that you can do comfortably start small and then show yourself because again what you pay attention to grows mm -hmm. and there's science behind that so you know if your one intention is to get up and make the bed then so be it but now you can celebrate because again think about it even you know when we were younger or when our kids are younger if your kids sit Sitting at, at the baseball plate, right? And somebody is saying to them, you're never going to hit the ball. You're never going to hit the ball. Guess what? You're never going to hit the ball. But if if you're, and I'm, you know, listen, the bottom line is we have to be our own cheerleaders here. But if we say to ourselves, I can do this. And now I have proof to show that I set a goal and I achieved it. That is way more motivating than than, than constantly saying to ourselves, oh, I screwed up again. I'm never going to do this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, setting those goals of, you know, this week or this day and then building upon it from there is very important. But also keep in mind, too, is that, you know, setting some sort of like morning routine, creating that structure. Think about what it is that you already do. And how we call something we call stacking. So, yes, you know, again, like, you know, if every morning you get up, I'm just making this up, you make your bed, you open up the shades. Well, that's something you do all the time. Well, then adding, you know, a five minute, 10 minute meditation to that. Again, you're already you're already adding to something that you've already done. So these are these are really important, but it's important to have a little bit of flexibility because things happen in life. And what do we say to ourselves when that happens? You know, that self-talk is so valuable. Like, okay, I you know like a couple of weeks ago I had COVID, right? So my morning routine went literally out the window because I wasn't getting out of bed. Right. And I had to give myself that permission that it's okay. So I think that those are the kind of things. So I'll talk talking about the third point is prioritizing yourself, taking some time to really think about what it is that you want, what is important to you, what is most important to you. And I'm going to add, not what you think you should be doing. And you, no. because you, I, I, and we're going to get to prioritize you a little bit deeper, but you, you said a few things that I just have to comment on. First of all, we just had a whole, I had a guest speaker come to the Moms Who Double Dare membership virtually and talked about habit stacking. And I forgotten about it because I had read about it and I loved it. And she, the, the, the biggest challenge, like one of the biggest challenge people have is drink, or if you're like that person who doesn't like to drink water, I drink a ton of water, but I love this habit stacking. So I have to just share it. 
while you're making your cup of tea or while you're making your cup of coffee in the morning, drink a glass of water. That's a way to have a sec. Your, your habit is already you stand by the coffee maker. Exactly. Just, exactly. So Add it in there. But I love the habit stacking. And see what just happened now? It went out the door. <laughs> this is, this is, <laughs> that's because I was so excited about something you said. I started thinking. I don't, that's good. It's okay. And and the other thing oh, that I would add. It's, I'm sorry. It's, 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 you talked about if your goal for the morning is just to make your bed. That's, and that's a big goal for you, then that's a big goal for you. You know, we hear a lot in the world on social media, go big, go big. And not just what's big for you is not big for me. What's big for me is not big for Lauren. What's small, making a bed. I've been doing that my whole life, but it's a big deal for my husband. Listen, you know, I, I think it's important, like you said, to really dial into ourselves, but all so, you know, life, life is a process, right? And a lot of times when I'm talking to clients, I always think about, you know, there's, there's a, it's an infographic that I saw one time where it's somebody climbing up the mountain, right? And typically we're always looking up and saying like, oh my God, I have so far to go, right? Like I have all these things that I want to do. I haven't done them, but all, we never, we rarely look behind us to say, wow, look how far I've come. So yeah. each of these things that we do are stepping stones, and so when we can look at the smallest possible task and we start to see that positive and that upward momentum, okay, so let's just say it was the bet. All right, well, then the second thing is going to be whatever it may be. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, planning our day, right? Or, right. Um, you know, making sure that we get certain things done, right? And we start to, you know, but but it's also so important that we, you know, bring in more support if possible. So if we're really trying, if things are really feeling overwhelmed, who can we ask to help us out? Do we have a friend? Is there a spouse? Is there money in your budget to hire somebody to take care of some of the things that, you know, and not to look at it as a perceived failure, right? but more that you're helping set up a system for yourself that's working and, you know, learning to say no. You know, that I think women in general were, were really not good at that. And, you know, there's the, uh, I guess I should, creating those boundaries for ourselves. You know, I really feel, and that's that when we talk about prioritizing you, those boundaries are so important mm -hmm. because when we forget that, we're losing sight of what's most important for us. And right now we need to take care of ourselves. I love that because when we hear boundaries, we tend to think of setting boundaries for, uh, around other people, but we don't look at it like it's for your own good. And when you take, when you set boundaries for you, you're actually doing the other people in your life a favor. Yeah. You're absolutely. not getting angry at them. Have you ever said yes to something and then you were like so pissed off at yourself? Like, and then you didn't want to <laughs> go and you didn't show up and you're angry. I can't believe they asked me. Well, people can ask you. You have to have the, the ability to say no in your vocabulary yes. as much as you can say yes. Right. And, and, you know, being able to have, and I, I, it's funny, I was just speaking about this to a few, a few people, you know, when you, when we get to a certain point in our lives, you know, having that comfort to say like, I'm good with me, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like, so for example, I'm not going to become a neurosurgeon or the president of the U S anytime soon, but that's oh. okay. Right. And, and, and Jody, you and I have friends that they, their schedules are insane. I'm exhausted just listening to them. It works for them. Some it does, some it doesn't, but, but it works for them. But sort of knowing where your lane is and being okay with that and, and working on, on you and, and making sure that you're getting done the stuff that you can get done and that you're feeling good about yourself. And then if you want to veer from that lane, that's okay. But at least you have that, that structure, that, you know, safety net in place so that when you start to feel that overwhelm, and oftentimes I'll ask a client, where do you feel that? Women, the neck, oh, tension in the head, the jaw clenching oh. in their stomachs. Pay attention to those feelings because that's telling you something. Yeah, And that's when we can start to say, you know what? I'm getting overwhelmed. What am I doing or what should I not be doing? Oh, I took on, I said yes to something you know what? I need to call them and say that this isn't going to work for me. Yes. You know, so paying yeah. attention to, to really how we are feeling is really, really important. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I would add too, is, you know, definitely seeking, uh, you know, a, a medical doctor or clinician to, to see if there's a diagnosis there 
Um, you know, if there is, you know, reaching out for support, there's therapy that can really help, coaching that can help, medication that can help. And also there are support groups, whether it's internally with the, amongst your friends, and there's even ADHD support groups for women as well. Oh, and thank you for saying that, because I'm going to say something that, and I, and I interviewed a woman who she calls herself the menopause midwife, <laughs> you know, it could be menopause and the decrease in estrogen. And it's not, a, it, it's not all right for your, your medical professional to say, you know, this is just menopause. You just have to deal with no sucking it up anymore because there's people no. like you that specialize in this, because even if you don't have clinically diagnosed ADHD, the symptoms are the same. Correct. And a coach like Lauren can help with that. So yeah, bit, yeah. and the skills to, and strategies are the same. That, exact, that's what it is. The skills and strategies, finding structure and routine, starting small with small achievable goals to prove to yourself. I love that. Mm -hmm. Prove to yourself that yes, you can. That's you don't have to go huge. Forget go going big is forget it. It's over. It's done. <laughs> and then I you also said celebrate your wins. Yeah. Celebrate your wins. But my point to that was that you don't just we women do not just have to suck it up. No, just, just because menopause is a thing that we can't, we can't dodge. You can't prevent it from coming. Doesn't mean that you have to live in the suck of it. No, 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 absolutely. But yeah. I think that we can also ease, ease ourselves during those, that time period. Yes. If we, if like we said, we give ourselves that permission and, have the and we also give ourselves that compassion and we take care of ourselves as yes. well. So that's yes. going to, you know, minimize a lot of those feelings that sort of come along with these physiological changes. No, I love it. This, this conversation could go on and on and on and we'll do it again, but I'm all right. So I've been thinking, have you been thinking because we have to leave the audience with their dare. Okay. Have you come up with something? I think so. Okay. My dare would be to set a time for like three times a week that is for, well, I shouldn't even say three times a week, set a time every week that is for, that is me time, 30 minutes. Oh, it's 30 minutes of me time. Oh, that's a good And thing. that could be anything. It could be a watching a trashy show. It could be I don't know, knitting, it could be, you know, uh, reading Anything. a book, Anything. but also with no apologies. Okay. No explaining. None. No okay. So no explanation needed. That's a great dare. Your dare, should you choose to accept it, I, I'm hearing the Mission, Mission Impossible theme <laughs> song behind me, is to set a time every week. Start with once a week. And if you want to be double daring and do it twice, knock yourself out. But the knock dare is just for pick mm -hmm. a time every single week. That's 30 minutes of me time, of you time with no apologies, no explanations. It's just, I got 30 minutes. It's all about me and you're going to do nothing or you're going to do whatever. I love it. I love that dare. That's a good dare. It's a good dare. And Lauren, We'll put your website or um, I know you gave me some links. We'll put how to find you in the show notes. But is there one perfect location where somebody could go to find you? Absolutely. Um, it's uh, uniquelywired.me. Okay. And we'll put that in the show notes too. Uniquelywired.me. Yes. And I'm just going to say, I know I'm a little biased because <laughs> the woman's voice you're hearing. And if you're watching the woman you see on the screen, Lauren is one of my dearest, closest friends. I am really grateful for that. And I'm right back at how you. fortunate and lucky I am. She's really, really good at what she does. So if you want to have a conversation with her, reach out to her um, because she is doing amazing work. She's helping a lot of people. Right. And, um, and she's there for you, for your children too, your grandchildren, whatever it may be. So just, follow fan and love her and reach out to her and don't forget your dare. And so what was it for you, everybody? What was it? You know, the mission, the purpose of this show of beyond empty nest is for you to get one thing, just take one thing away from every single episode, from every single guest that I have that either opened up your mind to something new and different that's possible or like, a, Oh my God, I can do that. What was the one thing that was said during this episode with Lauren 
that was your aha moment or that like turn the light bulb on for you. Let us know, send me a message, leave us a review, drop a comment on YouTube. However, I'll make sure Lauren gets it or by reach out to Lauren and let her know. But we need to hear from you. We want to know how our show is making an impact in your life. Share this episode with people you love and care about. And remember to tune in next week for another brand new episode of Beyond Empty Nest. And as I always say, they're on. Thank you for listening to this episode of Beyond Empty Nest. For detailed show notes and more information, be sure to visit jodysilverman.com. Have you heard of the Double Darers? Well, we're a community of moms and midlife women blending virtual and in-person interactions for connection, support, and exciting experiences. From mommy and me classes to soccer sidelines, moms have always found strength in community. And as we navigate the emptiness and other midlife transitions, having that go-to safe space and other women to lean on is a must. Ladies, this is not the chapter to do it alone. Our drama-free group echoes the sentiment of the Cheers theme song a place where everybody knows your name and our troubles are all the same. If you've been seeking connection and have a desire to figure out who you are and what your purpose is now, then Moms Who Double Dare is the perfect fit for you. Only through the link in our show notes below can you explore and enjoy the first month at half off. Plus, with no contracts, there's zero risk involved. Join us today and get started on your journey of self-discovery surrounded by new friends who understand and get you. You've sent your kids off to brave new experiences, meet new people, and discover who they get to be. Now it's your turn. It's your turn to embrace this new adventure. If you're ready to dare on, I'm here to lead the way. Let's embark on this exciting journey together. Click the link below, and as I always say, Dare on.